This is Lecture 9D on the solution of the RL and RC circuits with constant voltage. Now we're going to solve um, the circuit equations that we started off with. So first we put them in the standard form. I'm going to write again for the standard form. dy by dt plus some a times y equals b. That's the standard form. So you see I have both the RL and the RC circuits in the standard form. Here's the first derivative, dI by dt, which is equivalent to dy dt. Then r over l makes up my a. I put that in yellow. Here's the a, and for this circuit, a is r over l equals b. So here's b, and you can identify the b in the RL circuit. For the RC circuit, b is v over r, and a is 1 over rc. Now we use A to construct the integrating factor. Going back to the pin now, the integrating factor is E to the integral of A dt. So for this circuit, for the RL circuit, the integrating factor is E raised to the integral of R over L dt. For the RC circuit, it's E raised to the integral of 1 over RC dt because A is 1 over RC for the RC circuit, and for the RL circuit, it's R over L. Now, R, L, and C are constants, and so we can integrate immediately. And this is now the integrating factor with no more of that integral sign up there looking confusing. That is the integrating factor. This is what we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by. So now we're just going to go ahead and move to uh, the solution. Okay, here was um, here was a solution that I said we're going to use over and over again. Looking complicated because A has not been integrated yet. All right. In our case, A was integrated. Let me write those out again because it's hard to remember sometimes. So we had E to the integral of A dt for the RL circuit. That became E to the integral of R over L times t, which integrated to e to the r over l times t. No more integration. We carry out the integration. For the RC circuit, it's e to the integral of 1 over RC times t. Now, oh, what am I doing here? dt. Jumped ahead of myself. Okay, it's an integral. Carrying out that integration, I have e to the 1 over RC times t. Okay, and that's what you're seeing here. Right here. The integration has been carried out. Now you just have an exponential. You can probably deal with that. Okay. Over here, we have e to the negative of the integral. That's why you have e to the minus r over lt and e to the minus t over rc. Those are the conclusions. That is the current and that is the charge. The current in the RL circuit, the charge in the RC circuit. Now we've got to know what voltage is. We're going to do two cases, one in which the voltage is constant and the other in which the voltage is sinusoidal. Okay, so let's look at the constant voltage and okay, let me write again the equations we had before. Let's do for current. Current was e to the minus r over l times t times 1 over l times the integral of e to the r over l times t times some voltage. But if I say that's constant, if it's constant, then I can move it out from under the integral sign. And that's what's happened here. See, the voltage is out here because it's constant. And now I just have to integrate an exponential. Well, that's easy enough. So e to the minus r over l t remains. And if I integrate this exponential, so the integral of e to, let's just say, alpha t dt, the integral of that is 1 over alpha e to the alpha t plus some constant c, but I'm going to call, ooh, shouldn't use the alpha there. I'll call it um, k in this case. All right. So that's what I've done here. In this case, the alpha is r over l, so the L you get l over r because you get 1 over alpha if you carry out that integration. And then... Um, I'm using alpha. Bad choice here, but the constant of integration I'm setting is alpha. I don't want to use C because C is capacitance. Okay. 
I'm going to do the same thing here. If it's a constant voltage, it comes out from under the integral sign. Now all I have to do is integrate e to the t over rc, dt. Well, the integral of such an exponent is 1 over 1 over rc, so I get the rc here, e to the t over rc plus alpha. Okay, you can carry this out um, yourself, but it, it's fairly simple. And again, I'm using alpha because I don't want a confusion with c, which is capacitance. Before going to the next slide, I want to go ahead and multiply this through, distribute that through this um, through these parentheses. Same thing here. So let's just go ahead and do it, and you'll see that what looked complicated for a minute gets very simple. When I multiply e to the minus r over lt times e to the plus r over lt, that just turns into one. And the and notice that l is going to cancel here. So the first term is just v over r. Then I have one more term, alpha, which is my constant of integration, times e to the minus r over lt. Same thing for charge, q of t. I'm going to multiply through, and here the r's cancel, and I just get v times c plus alpha e to the minus t over rc. Okay, look at the RC circuit first. Here's what we had from the other page. That's our s solution. The charge equals capacitance times voltage plus some alpha e to the minus t over RC. All right. Can I find the value for alpha? I can find it if I know the value of charge at one particular point. An initial, um, the initial position, is, uh, the initial time is usually where you know charge. So if you say the initial charge initial meaning t equals zero. The initial charge in the capacitor is some q naught. We don't know what it is. It's going to be so many coulombs, doesn't matter. It's just q naught. Then we can solve. So how am I going to solve for that? I'm going to put t throughout this equation. So q of zero equals q naught equals c v plus alpha e to the minus zero over rc. Well, this is just one. So I have Q naught equals CV plus alpha, and I can solve for alpha equals charge times voltage minus initial charge. Capacitance times voltage minus initial charge. And that's what I've got right here. That gives me a particular solution. This is a general solution. This is a particular solution. When you solve a differential equation, when you have the constants still hanging around as constants, then it's the general solution. Once you evaluate those constants in terms of some initial or boundary values or other values, then you get the particular solution, even though this look, still looks fairly general because we haven't given a value to Q0. Right. So here's what we get. This is the solution for the charge in that series RC circuit. The charge equals capacitance times voltage, CV, plus, and in parentheses we have initial charge minus CV, in parentheses E to the minus T over RC. Now we do exactly the same thing for the RL circuit. This was our solution. It's the general solution because we have alpha, which is a constant. We don't have an a value for it. If we give the initial, again, initial, initial means t equals 0. At time t equals 0, let's say the current is some i0. Then we can solve for alpha. I'm going to do this again because you really have to know how to do this. i0 is i0. Go ahead and look at your equation. Uh, evaluated at t equals 0, so we've got alpha e to the minus r over l times 0. This, of course, is 1. So I have i0 equals v over r plus alpha. I can solve for alpha. Alpha, that's an alpha, equals v over r minus... What did I do wrong? Ah, went the wrong way. Equals i naught minus v over r. Seemed wrong. Okay, and here that was a problem with the recorder. The current in the RL circuit equals the voltage over resistance plus this other term, I0 minus V over R times the decaying exponential. I want to point out some features in these solutions that you'll, you'll see these features over and over again. Both terms contain, both solutions contain a term that does not vary with time. 
It's constant. This is called the steady state. It is the equilibrium value. For the RC circuit, the equilibrium value is C, capacitance times voltage. For the RL circuit, the equilibrium current is the voltage divided by the resistance. Okay, that's one term. Then you see another term, and this term depends on time. Okay, they both are some coefficient here, multiplying a decaying exponential. This is called the transient. The transient term decays to zero. This decays to zero with the time constant of RC. This decays to zero with the time constant of L over R. So those are two parts of the equilibrium uh, of the solution: an equilibrium term and a transient term. And here is a graph of one of these solutions, and it shows the features. This is similar to things we have seen already. Here is the equilibrium value right here. Remember, at an equilibrium solution, uh, the first derivative is zero. Okay, this is your equilibrium right here. Any solution that starts here stays here. Okay, for solutions in this case, because of their decaying exponential, because these are decaying exponentials, and because of the signs in the problem, any solution that starts greater than the equilibrium decays towards the equilibrium. Any solution that starts less than it creeps up towards the equilibrium solution. So the equilibrium solution is an asymptote for these equations, for these different solutions. And that's because this equilibrium is a stable one and solutions, nearby solutions, um, approach the equilibrium.